This is a spur gear. Its gear teeth are machined or cut straight across. When two spur gears mesh to form a gear set, as shown here, the smaller spur gear is referred to as the pinion, and the larger gear as simply the gear. A spur gear set transmits power from one shaft to a parallel shaft and is widely used in situations in which speed and torque are relatively low. In this arrangement of gears, the pinion and gear rotate in opposite directions. When it's necessary for two parallel shafts to rotate in the same direction, either an idler gear or an internal gear must be used. The idler gear is just another spur gear that is mounted between the original gear and pinion. The idler gear spins freely and transmits the power developed on the pinion to the gear. This way, the input shaft and the output shaft will turn in the same direction. Now, the other method that can be used to make two shafts spin in the same direction is to use an internal gear. In this example, the internal gear is also a spur gear. However, the internal spur gear's teeth are located on the inside of the cylinder instead of on the outside. In addition, the pinion is placed inside the internal gear. This arrangement allows the shafts to rotate in the same direction. The next type of gear we'll look at is called a bevel gear. Notice the difference in shape between it and a spur gear. Bevel gears are used to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft which is usually set at a 90 degree angle. Other shaft angles are possible, but the most commonly used angle is 90 degrees. Now, if you were to closely observe a spur or bevel gear set, you would see that the gears mesh across the entire gear width at the same time. When gears mesh in this way, they may produce a lot of noise. In order to reduce this noise problem and to enable the gears to carry greater loads, some spur and bevel gears are made with their teeth twisted. This design increases the surface area of the teeth and allows the teeth to engage more gradually. Since the teeth engage gradually, the noise produced by the gear set is reduced. And since the gear teeth are twisted, more gear teeth can be meshed at the same time. This increases the load that the gear set can transmit. Bevel gears made this way are called spiral bevel gears. Although spiral bevel gears are made differently from bevel gears, the two types are both used to transfer power from one shaft to another shaft, generally at a 90 degree angle. As you recall, a spur gear has straight teeth. A spur gear that is made with twisted teeth is considered to be a whole new type of gear called a helical gear. As two helical gears mesh, the contact between the two gears begins at one end of a tooth and extends gradually across the width of the tooth. This allows the gears to run quieter and smoother. This is also true for the spiral bevel gear. If the face of a helical gear is wide enough, several teeth will be engaged at the same time. This multiple engagement of gear teeth allows a helical gear to carry a larger load across a single gear set. Helical gears are normally used to transmit power from one parallel shaft to another. However, two helical gears may also be crossed to transmit power at 90 degrees. Helical gears are generally preferred over spur gears for high-speed operations because they can handle greater loads and they run smoother and quieter. Unfortunately, however, there is a problem associated with helical gears that needs to be addressed when these gears are used. The problem is that as helical gear teeth mesh, an axial thrust is developed along the shafts that support the gears. In other words, the gear and shaft try to move sideways. One of the ways to compensate for this thrust is to add a thrust bearing on the gear shaft. A thrust bearing absorbs axial thrust and holds the gear and shaft in the proper position inside a gearbox. Another way to compensate for the thrust is to add a second helical gear to the same shaft. This second gear's teeth are sloped in the opposite direction from the first helical gear, which acts to effectively cancel the thrust developed by the first gear. 
This arrangement is called a double helical gear. If this type of gear's right and left hands or sides are cut on the same cylinder, as shown here, the entire unit is referred to as a herringbone gear. There are herringbone gears in which a gap has been manufactured between the two sets of teeth, and there are other herringbone gears which are manufactured without this gap. Now the last type of gear we're going to look at in this part of the program is called a hypoid gear. This is a typical hypoid gear. A hypoid gear resembles the spiral bevel gear in some respects. For example, hypoid gears are shaped like spiral bevel gears, and hypoids are used on cross-axis shafts like bevel gear sets are. But unlike bevel gear sets, the shafts of hypoid gears do not line up with each other. They're offset. This offset allows hypoid pinions to have as few as five teeth in a high-ratio gear set, while the various types of bevel gears typically don't have less than ten teeth on a pinion. The smaller number of teeth on a hypoid pinion means that larger ratios can be obtained with a hypoid gear set than with a bevel gear set of the same dimensions. The gears we've looked at are some of the most common types of gears that are used, but keep in mind there are other types of gears as well. A worm gear set is characterized by one of its members having a screw thread. This part of the gear set is referred to as the worm. The other member of the gear set is called the worm gear, or just the gear. Worms are generally mounted on shafts, which are set at a 90 degree angle. Power is usually applied to the worm, which in turn drives the gear. The worm in a worm gear set is considered to be the pinion of the gear set. Because a worm has very few threads or teeth, a worm gear set has a very high gear teeth to pinion teeth ratio. Worm gear sets are generally used in situations where a large speed reduction with a subsequent large increase in torque is needed. Now there are several different types of worm gear sets commonly used that you should be familiar with. Let's take a look at a couple of the most common. This is a single enveloping worm gear set. This type of gear set is one in which the gear is throated so that it wraps partway around the worm. The contact area, or mesh, between the worm and the worm gear is significantly increased by this arrangement and allows a larger load to be carried across a single gear mesh. Another type of worm gear set is the double enveloping worm gear set. In a double enveloping worm gear set, the worm is also throated so as to wrap partway around a throated gear. This arrangement further increases the contact between the worm and the worm gear. So this type of gear set can carry even larger loads than a single enveloping worm gear set of the same size. 